the world's most lifelike picture. SU HD TV. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Welcome to the last episode of Recipe for Success. Now remember the winner of our viewers competition with 250,000 rands worth of prizes will be announced right after this episode. Now I'm happy to say that all our students got job offers and really great mentorship opportunities. Now before I introduce today's special guest, let's have a quick recap of this season. Now in episode one, we had Ukunaya from Cape Town with his delicious spicy ribs. I came in with an idea of how my plate would be. And as the time went by as I was cooking, it had developed. I had seen the plate and I had uh, changed my, uh, my initial idea. And I went with what I went with. Hopefully, it's something that's very appealing. Chefs, this is what I have prepared today. These chefs are back, right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're back to scrutiny again. Did I really put enough? Did my flavors really be the saving grace of my dish? Did my plating really make sense? Some heat, it's tasty. Very nice. I like the paprika. I think what I would like to offer you is um, a chance to come and work with me uh, and really show me what you've got. That's an amazing result. How are you feeling? Very much excited. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much, Quentin. Thank you very much, Thank you, chef. Congratulations. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. And in episode two, we had Jeanette from Joburg with a butter chicken curry. This job offer would mean the world to me because I left a lot behind me. Chef Ruben and Chef Neil are there watching this whole thing. I'm feeling very nervous, but nerves are good. I'm using the biggest rolling pin on earth. <laughs> I looked at the wine rack and I thought, mm, maybe I should just use one of those bottles, but I have a reputation to keep and I'm hoping to impress. Chefs, I've completed the task. I'm happy with my outcome. I hope you enjoy the dish. This is one of the most important interviews of my life. And it's almost like an out of body experience because I know I've done what I can, but it's still up to somebody else to decide my fate. It's a gift to be able to see some food and to understand what you've done. I'm very impressed with your structuring of that dish and the layers. I would really like to offer you a job at the restaurant if, if you're keen. That's awesome, isn't it? It's looks great. Like you, looks like you. <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. <laughs> in episode three, we had Tulile from Durban with a unique take on T-bone. When uh, Chef McLean said that I could start cooking, um, first thing I thought was, these are big guys <laughs> right next to me, and I don't want to mess anything up, I don't want to mess anything up, I don't want to mess anything up. I, I was really, really, really nervous, but moreover, I really wanted them to enjoy my dish, you know? And you're just hoping that whatever it is that I made, it's really up to the standards that, you know, they are actually looking forward to. Okay, chefs, I'm finished with my dish. Um, and here it is. Covered your base as well on this yeah. dish. <laughs> when they started cutting the meat, and they're putting it in their plates, and they're putting it in their mouth, and they're not saying anything. They're like, mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> mmm, is it bad? Mmm, it's good. Mmm, what are you doing here? So <laughs> you don't know. Coming in at such a late stage, you're going to have to really listen hard, work hard to, to get to get further forward. You're going to have a lot of young whippersnappers who are really pushing hard to get through the kitchens. You're still very green. I think you've got a lot to learn. And I would very much like to invite you into the kitchen if it's something that you would you would like to do. Don't mind me, I'm a crier. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Thank you. In episode four, we had Tessetso from Cape Town with his fettuccine Alfredo. Um, I was very, very nervous because Chef Ruben was there and Chef Jodine was there, so uh, it was very nerve-wracking. It is a simple dish, but um, I'm very satisfied with how it turned out. 
I'm, I'm proud of myself, even though I was very, very nervous. Okay, guys, this is my test. Uh, I was very, very nervous when it came to the presentation because I didn't know what the, the chefs were going to think. You know, a kitchen is a pressured environment. <clears throat> and I think to have myself and Ruben sitting, staring while you're working is quite a bit of pressure. So I think it's definitely a good effort. If you're willing to make that sacrifice, then I could offer your position in my kitchen. That's Thank really you. Okay. Pleasure. This is going to change my life. In episode five, we had Arista from Boxburg with her take on cannelloni. When the chefs told me I could start, the um, most anxious moment I've felt in quite a while. <laughs> and when I came to my third cannelloni, law has it that it would explode. I pressed a little bit too hard. I didn't really know what to expect. I was just hoping for the best. <laughs> so I've plated my meal. I do hope you enjoy it. I'm quite happy with the results. I knew it wasn't going to be awful but it might have its own mistakes in it, such as something being raw or undercooked or overcooked. So Peter, what do you think? I think it's very well balanced, seasoned, very nice. It pairs very well with the wine. I think we should give this a go. <laughs> <laughs> what awesome memories. We'll continue the recap after the break. Add items during wash. Add wash. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Finally, a fridge you can personalize. Top mount freezer. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. In episode 6, we had some Kelo from Durban with his oxtail dish. It was so nerve-wracking as well as intimidating to see the kind of people we look up to and then they just judging me. I had to be myself and bring out the personality and that I, I, what makes me come into cooking at the first place. So yeah, it was a bit challenging, but it's good to have nerves. So if I have to tell you the ingredients, I have to kill you, chef. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my chefs, uh, this is my end product and I've tried my best. I hope you enjoy it. Looks good, eh? No, it looks really, really yeah, good. I'm very nice. impressed already just from the presentation. Mm -hmm. Just hope the, the taste will match, you know, the expectation <laughs> that I have, like, you know. When they started tasting my dish, I was so pretty nervous at that time uh, because I didn't know what's going on on their palate. So that quietness just killed me for a moment. Although it's an old, classical, rich dish, it doesn't feel over-rich, you know? Um, and I think like, yeah, the plating was really elegant. So I like the way you work. Um, I like your story. What I would like to do is offer you a job. I'm humble, I'm humble by this opportunity. And you'll see, I won't let you down. In episode seven, we had Aisha from Cape Town with her Transport chocolate cake. Okay, tell me, it's looking very chocolatey. Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are you going to make? So today we're going to be making my version of a tangible chocolate cake. All right, my angel, take it away. I'm watching. I've cooked this cake so many times before that I, I don't need a recipe and I can do it with my eyes closed in my sleep. I like chocolate and I think most people like chocolate in insane amounts. So when she did say that it's like chocolate on chocolate on chocolate, I was slightly worried because I know there are a few people who are not keen on that much chocolate. So today I've got the chocolate cake once again. Right. Cool. Show us. Let's Show us. Reveal. Oh. Okay, can we try it? Yes, go ahead, please Marvelous. do. Marvellous. If you're presenting something that somebody else has to eat, it's always going to be a bit nerve-wracking because you have to await criticism or a good response. Oh, so moist, can? Yeah. Oh, so here's your buttercream yes. over here. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. I think it's quite a nice way of kind of presenting a cake, you know. It's quite a modern take on yeah. it. I would be completely delighted to take you under my wing. Thank you so much. In episode eight, we had Emilio from Johannesburg with a whole new take on Thai seafood curry. Mm -hmm. 
I knew what I wanted to do. But the, I think the pressure got to me of having the chef standing there watching me. Like, it's like everything just got jambled up in my head. I'm thinking, okay, I need to start with, what must I start with? Oh, no, because I already started burning the, the pan on its own. There's nothing in the pan, but like when Chef Ruben reminded me about it, I was like, ah, oh, first mistake. What am I going to do about it now? So it's actually um, quite challenging, you know, because this is one of my dishes that's been on the menu since we opened the restaurant. My nerves start racing immediately, like, okay, now they, they're going to watch me. They're going to watch every single one of my moves. They're going to watch if I make a mistake. They're going to watch if I'm burning something. And all these thoughts are running through my head and my heart is pounding. <laughs> Chefs, I uh, did my best, and that's what I have to present to you. At the time, I'm thinking, oh no, oh no, what are they going to say, what are they going to say? I think it's quite nice, the approach that they took with the dish. With the sauce being separate, you know, um, you can taste the fish, you know, you can taste the prawns, you know. It should be a, a good one for the industry, you know, just a good protege. That's a yes if you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. In episode nine, we had Teppo from Cape Town, and he cooked beef sirloin. So as I was about to cook, uh, seeing Chef Ruben and Michael over there, I literally was nervous and looking at the fact that okay, I have to prepare this meal, uh, though I have only done it a couple of times, was a little bit unsure of it, so I gave it my all. I think it, played, it worked well in the end. Chefs, I've done my best and this is what I've prepared for you. Just wondering if they would actually like it. Nice sort of textures going on. Um, I really like the, the bar marks on the meat. Yeah, you know, you've shown all the right sort of personality traits. Um, definitely somebody that I, can, that I could work with. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to spend a bit of time in my kitchen. Congratulations. Thank you. I think you're going to learn a hell of a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be a great experience for me. I'm looking forward to it. In episode 10, we're Tyron from Boxburg and he cooked seafood risotto with lobster mousse. Before I became a chef, it was always um, lobsters, you know, the expensive food and, you know, the more delicacy. So I thought I'd take this opportunity and really take these ingredients and see if I could create something that really wowed the judges. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm yeah, just yeah. asking if yeah, it's so, your thing, so... Yeah, yeah. so camera, camera lights, everything first. Well, the way that I think is if I put the wine in, then everything will kind of absorb it, so that individually that's kind of got the wine flavour a little bit. It's the wrong thought, but we'll... Is it? No. Oh, okay, sure. It's okay. We'll taste it, it's all in the taste. Yes, chef. I hope I've done enough. Uh, I've done my best, and I'd really like to thank you guys for the opportunity. All the chefs are tasting my food, I'm freaking out, they're not saying anything, not really. I, I don't know if this is a good thing or not. I like the mousse, the mousse comes through very nicely with the, with the, with the lobster flavour. Um, I can pick up the brandy on the prawns, which is great. I think it was a good try. So that means he's got the job? Um, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Great, you. Darren. Thank yeah. you. In episode 11, we had Kaylin from Cape Town with her deconstructed nachos. I'll have you know, it's one of my favorite flavors in the world. I grew up with these ingredients and yeah, I look forward to tasting it. It was like a challenge for me. Not in a sense that I had to compete with his mother, but I had to bring it up to a standard way of be different, but also something we'll like at the same time. When it was time for me to play, I was very nervous. I only had one shot to make sure the presentation was perfect. So this is the dish that I've prepared for you guys. I've tried my best. I hope you enjoy this meal. Oh, you've done a lot with a Mexican dish. That looks like a French dish. <laughs> Thank eh? you. <laughs> this is either the beginning of a new journey or a complete flop. I don't think the white wine works that well for it. I think the Sauvignon Blanc is a bit crisp and a bit light for all your robust spices. But I think your Pinotage is a much better match. It's got good body and it does, like you said, it holds up to the, the, the aromatics and the meat. Yeah, I think we're going to offer you a position in our restaurant. So congratulations. Arrive on Monday. Bags packed. <laughs> in episode 12, we had Christo from Pretoria 
with coffee panna cotta. I kind of panicked for a second, but I thought to myself, sit tight, you know that this dish works. I started multitasking because I knew if you don't multitask, you're not going to get this done in an hour. I have done my very best and I am very happy with my end product. There are maybe some technicalities that they could hit me on. I can't read their expressions. I'm, I'm kind of scared. I think it picks up the coffee notes and the, yeah. and the chocolate notes quite well, but it's, it, it hides some of the, the more delicate flavors. Yeah. And in the end, you, you sit with lingering wine rather than yeah. a, nice, a nice pairing. All things considered, I think it, it would be a nice addition to our, to our kitchen team. I can't wait to start working in Chef Adrian Maria's kitchen. So, that was all the students. After the break, I'll give my feedback and I'll introduce our special guest. Works and plays together perfectly. Note 7, here classic. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung, business in a box. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Now guys, I want you to give a warm welcome to the lady that made all of this possible. Michelle Potgieter from Samsung, where they believe in changing lives for the better. <laughs> Michelle, welcome to the show, and I know how important this is to you. I know, I know this plays a very big role in, in your business. Ruben, yes, definitely. At Samsung, we believe in empowering the youngsters, as we call them, the millennials of South Africa, and creating opportunities for them as a platform to raise their careers. So I've been following all of you very closely over the last couple of weeks, and I must say I've been very, very impressed. I would love to see where this takes you as your stepping stone for the future. And I would like to be in those restaurants and come and have beautiful meals. <laughs> Uh, listen, I wish, I mean, I wish I had this opportunity when I started out. And I know I keep on saying this to you guys, that this, is, this was a, a really unique opportunity um, for just 12 of you guys to work in front of, like, really some of South Africa's top chefs. I'm sure you went and found out more about these, uh, these amaz amazing chefs. Um, and, you know, what's going to happen from now? You're going to work for them, you're going you're gonna to be sponges, um, you're going to learn as much as possible from these guys because what do we want? Ultimately, we want the next crop of uh, top chefs for, for, the, for, the, for the years to come and that's where you need to see yourself. So for me, that is why this is so important. Um, you're not giving your CV to a chef, you're actually cooking in front of him, talking to him, engaging him. And you saw as well, even though your food was great, ultimately, you won a lot of these chefs over with you being yourself, who you are, and showing them that hunger that you want to succeed in this industry. I saw it, and they saw it, and I think that, that played a big role in you guys getting those jobs. So, well done to all of you, and I'm looking forward to seeing your names up in lights one day, okay? <laughs> Michelle, so talk to us a little bit more about your recipe for success. Well, Ruben, it's all about building a brand. Samsung is South Africa and a global consumer brand, very well known, but it's not something that just happens overnight. You have to build it, I'm sure you know, about building your own brand. Look, I mean, I know that it's, it's so important. Now, obviously, a brand, you have a name, and then under that, you know, it sort of like encapsulates so, so much of who you are and what you are. And um, I think over the years, I've realized that even though initially I didn't really start out understanding that so well. Yeah. But you guys have to start building your own brand. And what does that entail? I've been within the marketing profession for quite a couple of years. <laughs> and um, it's quite important to say who and what you stand for as an individual. So building a brand is difficult because it can be built and destroyed within an hour or within minutes. So in terms of building my own brand, I live by the CSR principle. 
So it's not corporate, corporate social responsibility. No, not that one. Oh, is there okay. another one? There's another one. <laughs> In my case, it stands for competence, sincerity, and reliability. You need to define your own values on how you're going to build your brand. So in terms of competence for me, all of you must display your competence. You've learned something over these, over these last couple of weeks. Display it wherever you go. Competence does not just mean that matric certificate or your qualification. Every day display your competence. Um, secondly, your sincerity. How sincere are you in your dealings with your everyday people? You'll meet people, you'll engage with suppliers, you'll engage with fellow employees within, your, within the kitchen. How do you deal with them? And then the last one is reliability. If you say you're going to do something, can people trust you to deliver it? Okay? Reliability, very, very important. So if you're going to say, I'll prepare that starter, then you will do it. Okay, so those are my values which I base my brand on. And um, for you guys, the challenges out there, define your values and build your own brands. And in future, you may be the next Ruben. Who knows? <laughs> Listen, that's really great advice. And I, I, I mean, I hope you guys take it to heart. Now guys, you might not know this, but Michelle also asked me to keep an eye out for the student who impressed me the most, okay? So we know this is not a competition, but Samsung believes in rewarding excellence. Michelle, can you please announce the winner? Ruben, thank you very much for overseeing what they've been doing over the past 12 weeks. I know it was not an easy decision, guys, because you are all very worthy future chefs. So, the winner on behalf of Samsung is... Michelle, can you please wait one more minute? Um, let's have one more look at the fabulous prizes that one lucky viewer will win after this episode. There are almost 250,000 rand in prizes to be won in our Recipe for Success viewer competition, which includes a full lifestyle solution worth over 100,000 rand from Samsung, comprising of a Galaxy S7 Edge smartphone, a Galaxy Tab S2 tablet, a color laser multifunction printer, a 55-inch curved SUHD TV, a water wall dishwasher, a top mount freezer, and a hot blast convection microwave oven. From Capsicum, a City and Guilds diploma bursary in food preparation. From fine and fabulous new group SA, Jean de Bois Le Qual 24-piece French cutlery set. From Grand Cru Glassware, eight Riedel varietal specific glasses. And from Mervyn Gurr Ceramics, a handmade crockery set for four. Only one lucky viewer will win all of these prizes. Now, congratulations to whoever's going to win those amazing prizes. Michelle, are you ready now to announce the winner? Yes, Ruben. So on behalf of Samsung, I would like to announce the winner. And that is the individual who impressed us the most. This individual will receive the Samsung Business in a Box to the value of 40,000 Rand, which includes a Galaxy S7, a tablet, as well as a printer. Ruben? Awesome prizes. Really great. And the winner is all of you. That was amazing. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Now remember, the winner of our viewers competition with 250 rands worth of prizes will be announced right after this episode. Did I say 250 rand again? <laughs> Welcome to the last episode of Recipe for Success. Now remember the winner of our viewers competition with 250 rand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You won't believe what you can make in a microwave. Hot blast. Recipe for Success, proudly brought to you by Samsung.